We have, over the past 40 to 60 years, seen a truly stunning digital revolution. Computers today are faster, they are cheaper, they are smaller, and they are more ubiquitous than anyone could have ever imagined. This spectacular technology has allowed us to make groundbreaking advances in nearly every scientific field, a few of which I've described here. That's been the past 40 years. So where are we going? What's the future going to look like? Well, I have no idea. But what I do know is that many are questioning for how long this trend of faster, cheaper, smaller, more ubiquitous computers can continue, and it's a good question. Because, in fact, engineers are beginning to hit certain physical limits in terms of the number of transistors that they can squeeze onto a computer circuit. Many believe that if we're to keep up with the exponential growth of the past few decades, we are going to need a fundamental paradigm shift. And to this end, quantum computing holds some exciting potential promise. The language of today's computers is ones and zeros. A transistor, the building block of a computer circuit, represents a one or a zero as the presence or absence of charge. In a quantum computer, a one or a zero is represented as a spin of a particle. It's either a spin up or a spin down. So more than just a different representation, a computer based on manipulating the spin of a particle holds the potential to radically and fundamentally change the way we compute. So for example, it's been shown that if you can build a quantum computer, then it can solve problems much, much faster than any of the most powerful traditional computers today. So in this graph, I'm showing you the amount of time it takes to evaluate a portion of the algorithm needed to sequence the human genome. The upper line shows the amount of time it takes for a classic computer, and the lower line is how long it takes on a quantum computer. And as you can see, a quantum computer would allow you to solve problems that today are simply impossible to solve even with the fastest computer. Now, with its newfound power, a quantum computer also has the dark side, which is that it could break virtually all existing encryption algorithms that are used to secure our computers and online commerce. So there are potentially serious consequences to this type of technology that we're going to have to consider. Nanotechnology builds and controls devices on an atomic and molecular scale. These devices are on the scale of 10 to the minus nine meters. And to give you a sense for this, a strand of hair is on the order of 10 to the minus five meters, four orders of magnitude larger than nano devices. These devices will fundamentally alter the scale at which computing can operate, and therefore holds great promise for advances in many areas. And lastly, there have recently been very exciting advances in the technology that can deliver power wirelessly. I believe that this technology will be available within the next decade and that it will make computing even more ubiquitous than it currently is because we will no longer be held hostage by our power cables or three-hour battery lives. While I don't think it is possible to predict what the future will look like, I do believe that further advances in computing and information technology will continue to lead to dramatic advances in science.